Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. What I want to do today is I want to kind of start a rope clinic of sorts, rope and knots clinic that's going to walk through all the different knots, hitches, and things that you would use and why you might use them and what we teach here at the Pathfinder School from a basic intermediate to advanced level. And I want to do that in a series of YouTube videos for you so that in case you can't come to a course or something like that, you still get the information. So what I want to do in this first video opening a series, I want to talk a little bit about ropes, a little bit about different types of ropes, rope care, rope terminology, and things like that. And we'll just kind of keep these things short and sweet, 10 to 20 minutes at a time, and we'll walk through them step by step. And it'll probably be, you know, eight or 10 part series. And this is going to be part one. So stay with me, guys. Okay, so let's first talk about rope material. Obviously, in natural materials, you have a plethora of different types of rope from Manila to hemp to jute to sisal and they look pretty much just like this natural fibers and this is a what they call a laid or twisted rope it's got three lays inside of it and they're twisted together to make a stronger piece of rope you also have nylon rope and nylon rope is probably the most common rope out there that you see in sporting goods stores and things like that most common rope used for the outdoors or rope types used in the outdoors are made from types of nylon you also have polypropylene ropes. <clears throat> you see those a lot as well, but they're not near as strong, generally speaking, as nylon rope. The biggest advantage to nylon ropes or man-made material ropes over something like a natural rope is the fact that you can store them or put them up wet. They're not going to rot as bad as something that's made out of natural material. The advantage to natural material is it generally holds knots better but the disadvantage is it's not as strong. So there's a give and take there. Generally speaking, I always use man-made material ropes for everything I do. But now that we kind of talked a little bit about what ropes are made out of, let's talk about the different types of rope. So we talked a little bit about what's called laid or twisted rope with this piece of manila rope. Here's a piece of nylon rope that's laid or twisted rope. And it's the normal rope that you're used to seeing all the time that looks like it's wound together. You also have what's called braided rope. And braided rope is multiple braids. And these things are made on machines. And it's multiple strands that have been braided together on a machine to make braided rope. The advantage to this braided rope is it's very, very strong. The disadvantage to it is it can be slick compared to a regular laid rope. It doesn't hold knots as securely. So you've got to be careful with the knots you use in it sometimes because they can slip. Another advantage of a laid rope would be the bank line that we use all the time out here at the Pathfinder School that I talk about on all my videos. My instructors talk about it as well. We've been using it for years and years and years and years. Um, it is a twisted rope. It's three strands, individual strands of nylon rope that have been tarred to add to the wear resistance, UV resistance, and rot resistance of the cordage itself. The last type of rope that we see a lot is called a kern mantle rope. And what that means is you've got a braided nylon outer shell with big inner strands. And paracord is a very good example of that. Climbing ropes are made the same way. They are a kern mantle rope. They have an outer shell and inner strands. The main advantage to kern mantle type ropes is their strength to diameter. They're a very, very strong cordage. They hold knots fairly well. They don't slip near as bad as some other nylon style ropes do like braided ropes, but they do have some stretch that you have to contend with. Now you do have kern mantle ropes that don't stretch that are called static lines and they're built different on the inside so that they don't stretch when they are put under load like a normal climbing rope would. And they're called static lines, but they're made in the same fashion with a kern mantle on the outside or a mantle on the outside and fibers on the inside. So we've got a coil of rope or the standing end of the rope here. If it's attached to something, it still is the standing end. If we go around a spar or something twice like this, we went around it and around it again, that's called a round turn of rope. If we only go over the, the spar or the object one time, it's just called a turn in the rope. If we take that rope and we turn it overhand, that's an overhand loop. If we turn it underhand, that's an underhand loop. Over, under, okay? If we take 
a section of the line and bend it in half like this. That's called a bite of line. And then this is the running or working end of the rope. This is what we're working with. This is the running end, running away from the standing end. Okay, the last thing I wanna cover real quick in this kind of intro to the series is the difference between a knot, a bend, and a hitch. Okay, so anytime I use this rope and I'm not attaching it to something else or attaching two objects together with this rope, it's considered a knot. So if I put an overhand in that, it's considered a knot. If I take this rope and I wanna put an end of the line loop in it, so say I use a perfection loop to do that, and I tie a perfection loop in the line to give me an end of the line loop, it's still a knot because I'm not attaching anything, I'm not attaching to anything. Now, if I'm using this rope to attach another rope, so say I take a bite in this line and I take a piece of paracord and slip it up through there and come around and tie a sheet bend, that's considered a bend. That's why it's called a sheet bend. So rope to rope connections like that are considered a bend. If I take this rope and I attach it to a stationary object, so in this case, we've got a tripod. Let's say that we come around here and we tie what's called a Siberian hitch in this line. Then what we've done is we've tied a hitch because we've taken the loaded end of the line here and we've taken the running end of that line or the working end and we've attached it to an object so that we can either pull tension against that or adjust tension on this line. If we're attaching multiple objects together, it's considered a lash. So you have a knot, a hitch, a bend, and a lash. All right, guys, that was just a little bit about terminology, ropes, things like that, so that we could get that out of the way and get into the meat and potatoes of the stuff. So stay with me for the next installment in this series. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.